Right, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and we're going to start doing some old videos about manifolds and airflow and ports. We're going to get into port skirts, lift, all that kind of shite, port geometry, and also exhaust and stuff like that. But one person asked me a question, actually it was an email, sent me an email saying, Matt, you've said that in previous videos that uh, molecules and atoms in air will repel each other and things aren't sucked into people uh, atoms and molecules aren't sucked into voids they basically expand into those voids and you've said loads of times about stuff like uh, shrinking holes or do they expand stuff like that and you said that atoms repel each other why do atoms repel each other and it's a good question and it's quite helpful to understand stuff about air and so on. Where's that fucking green pen gone? No, it doesn't matter. We're absolutely gone. Right, so I'm sick of fucking rubbing the black. The black and red are absolutely fucking useless. Regardless, why do atoms repel each other? Well, atoms will go with hydrogen because it's really fucking easy. Atoms have protons, which are positive, And then they have electrons that are negative. Oh, it should be a little e. Fucking hell. I'd be fired for that. Little e. Electrons with little e's. And then when you get to more complicated atoms and all the rest of it, all like stuff like deuterium and stuff like that, you have neutrons. Now neutrons we don't need to worry about because they're neutral. They have no charge. What is charge? <sighs> we don't know. Right? We just know that there's an asymmetry to this. Right? Because in... Um, and it's nothing to do with the actual element themselves because we have antimatter. So we have uh, positrons, which are electrons that are positively charged. They exist perfectly fine, and so on and so on. So what matters is, is not if it's negative or positive, just like for likes and differences. So negatives and negatives, and positives and positives. So what is the problem with all of this? Uh, no, it's not, not the problem with this. How does this work? So our nucleus, our core, is positive. Right, it's positive. Let's get rid of the neutron. We don't need to worry about that. That basically just increases the mass of things like uranium and stuff. And our outer shell, our electron, is negative. Now, atoms don't orbit like this. Electrons are just a fuzzy mess. It's just a <laughs> around it. Ghostly stuff. Now, this is basically what keeps these in check, is that the electron has momentum, so she's flying around. So it's just like the moon flying around the Earth, in a way, but it's all random, messy and horrible. But they are attracted to each other because this is positive and this negative and opposites attract. So my missus kept on telling me. But regardless, what happens is, is you get another atom to come in. So we have another proton here with another electron here. Like that. And as you can see, their first point of contact, if you get what I mean, is right here, is in this region here. And as the electrons are whizzing around, you can just think of this entire shell as negative. Negative, and this shell as negative. And, um, uh, what's the word? Like for like, repel. Right, just like magnets. You put a north and a north together. I'm sure there's a, this is a prison, <laughs> prison terminology. You put two points together, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Tip to tip, um, you put two negatives together and they repel. So you put two positives together, uh, they repel as well. So two north, they repel, two south repel. It's a north and a south, so a negative and a positive that are attracted to each other. So basically what happens is, is when you have these two atoms coming towards each other, they will automatically repel each other because the distance from this to this is far greater than just, say, these electron shells. So they will repel. So how do atoms stick together at all? Well, that's all about electron sharing and shells and stuff like that. Some atoms have uh, a fewer amount of electrons than they should have. Oxygen's a party bitch. Some of them have more and so on and so forth. Um, and that's how you get covalent bondings and ionic bondings and so on and so on and so on. There's all these different kinds of bonds and stuff. But... Um, Things that are stable, which are quite happy to just live alone, like O2 and nitro, uh, uh, nitrogen, um, just nitrogen goes around in pairs in the atmosphere, oxygen goes around in pairs, everyone's absolutely fucking completely happy. And they will literally repel each other. They will repel each other because of this like for like, these two negatives. It's like, whoa, just like magnets. Literally just like magnets. It's a shame, I don't think you can make magnets that have uh, a, a north 
centre and a south. Oh, it wouldn't matter which way it was. I don't know if you can get magnets like that. I don't think you can because of, I can't remember, something to do with electron sharing. But <laughs> they basically just repel each other. So this is why there is, just say if you have a gas in a box. So if you have a box like this, and then there was a divider here, there was a divider, and we slide back that divider. This is all full of molecules over here. For that, the first molecule that they, in a sense, sees the rabbit hutch kind of thing, there is a massive repulsion force from all of these atoms here, and there's fuck all here. So this atom just goes, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And it does. And as you open it, it just fills more and more. More of these are repelled. And they are repelled into this open space until they bounce around because it will basically bounce there, bounce there, bounce there, bounce there. Some all come in, they'll collide and they'll bounce off in different directions. It's all chaotic. But this is how gases will fill the volume that they're in. The other important thing as well is, is how fast these molecules can fill that space. And this is what we're going to get onto with exhausts and stuff like that. Um, because you open a valve, how fast will that exhaust gas expand into that open, you know, into that um, void in a sense. And it's not completely a void, but you get what I mean, it's a lower pressure. Basically, you've got shitloads, it's density, you've got shitloads of atoms in here, and a few in here that are bouncing around, and the more you expose them. And this is why pressure equalises out, if you give it enough time, usually it's very short amount of time, but um, if you give it the time, it will equalise out, you know what I mean? It's when you open a bottle and you see the needle go up. That's how quick the pressure equalises in that system. But that does take quite a lot of time compared to an atom, time-wise. Um, but yes, that's why it, the, these things are not sucked in. There's nothing pulling these atoms this way. There's none of that kind of rubbish. And as soon as this atom comes over here, there's atoms in the surface container. And it goes, huh, and it repels away. And it's all a fucking mess. That's what we mean by bouncing, in a sense, as it bounces around. It's repelled down this tube or into this container or whatever. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.